Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to the New England Racing Show, Manchester, New Hampshire, Community TV, Channel 23. We're also on YouTube and on Facebook, and I'm your host, Bill Sturgis. Well, last week, uh, my sons and I went down to Charlotte, North Carolina for a NASCAR banquet, and we did some sightseeing down there. I brought my video camera. Uh, the first thing we did was we went and visited Penske's Racing Shops operation, which was pretty cool. So we've got some footage of that, which we're going to show you now. You walk in there, and the first thing you do, is, of course, is go into a big souvenir room, which I didn't tape any of that, uh, where they sell you uh, $30 T-shirts and $25 hats and all that. But uh, they had everything in there. And then we went on the sky, a catwalk here, where you look down below, and you get to see them working on the cars to a certain extent. And this place is just huge and immaculate. I, I couldn't get over how clean it was. When you look at those workbenches, all stainless steel tops, uh, right there under that 22 car, they have the scales built into the floor, the four scales, four pads. On quite a few of the bays, they had that. And everything's stainless steel. And they've got uh, the 22 cup car there. Uh, they had done some testing at Charlotte Speedway the day before. They're testing out some new spoilers. Uh, I guess these here are some templates so that when they set the cars up, uh, the bodies and everything, that it's all done properly the way NASCAR wants it. But they were messing around with the weight jackers and they have uh, tires that they groove. I think they groove them themselves so that they know that those are the tires that they work with in the garage and not mix them up with the racing tires. My son knew more, a lot more about that than I did. They had some nationwide cars in there too. Uh, Mustangs, bodies, versus the fusion bodies that the cup cars are. There's your scales built into the floor. We tried to get down to, uh, in the back rooms they have the, where they put the engines together and everything and, uh, Told him we know Joey Logano, but they said, yeah, so does everybody. So that didn't work. So we had to view everything from the catwalk. There's a Fusion, a cup car. They had a couple of guys in there under the, under the hood polishing the insides of the body panels. That's in one of the back rooms. We got a little glimpse of them fabricating a new body. Here's a new fusion car for Brad Kozlowski. You know, you think they get a few months off to actually take a break, but I, I don't think they take much of a break. They're already building cars for next year. Like I said, they were testing the day before we were there. It's a fusion, it's a cup car. Yeah, the Mustang is a nationwide car. The uh, black and white yeah, nationwide car, the Mustang.
We have different sponsors. So we're wondering how they turn around and, and paint the cars in one week. I think they just use different cars with different sponsors. And in the background there, there's a bunch of cars all covered up. They don't want us to see those. So we didn't have any idea if those were last year's cars or cars that they're, they're building. And there's a few on jack stands in the back. That Mustang's a nationwide car. And those are cup cars. Just amazed at how clean everything was. How many people they have working in there. When you get down there, you realize that it, this is such a multi-million dollar business. I mean, it's almost like money means nothing compared to up here in the Northeast, our little operations we have in our garages. But that's where a lot of these guys came from. So they were rolling the car on and off the scales, jacking weight around, much the same as we do. You know, see if you have a turn in, half a turn in, how much it affects the weight. So when you get to the track, you already know that. And you want to make an adjustment, you know just how far to turn each corner to make an adjustment with. So there's some posters, but in the back there are the rooms where the real business goes on. And there's Bobby Allison's number 16 Matador from 70s, I believe. Uh, and we also visited, uh, we asked them about the uh, Indy cars. So this is uh, another end of the building where they have uh, Will Powers Indy car on display. What a what a work of art that that thing is. You're looking at the uh, control arms there in the front. They have carbon fiber uh, in inlays onto the metal. Everything's aerodynamic, it's flattened out. I was amazed at the steering wheel, how many controls are on here. Not sure what they all were. What, pan hard bar, weight jackers, brake bias. There's a carbon fiber inlays. And they can change that wing pretty quickly. And they say, do not touch the car. I can understand why. <laughs> I, didn't, I was afraid to touch it, actually. Too bad they don't have another IndyCar race up at New Hampshire. And we went to one of those. It was pretty cool. 
That's when Tony Stewart was still driving the Indy cars back in, I believe, 96. And they had a couple of these, this car on display, it's like a half, half size, and you go 50% size for a wind tunnel model. And uh, on the way to Penske's, we passed a, a huge shop that was a, actually a wind tunnel place where I guess a lot of these teams uh, bring their cars to check them out. So they had that yellow car and they had another Indy car here too. That's a 50% uh, size for wind tunnels. And that looks like an older car. Yeah, the 2003 Indy 500 race winner. So that's it for the Penske shot. That was real interesting. And uh, the next day, let's see, that was Thursday. Friday, we took a ride over to Charlotte Speedway, which was right by our hotel. And uh, I was just amazed at the immense miss, immenseness of this place. Uh, across the street from the speedway, they had a quarter mile dirt track, complete with grandstands and everything that they run on, uh, along with a drag strip. And then off to the side, they have a go kart, uh, a go kart uh, track. So we went around and got to the tunnel that goes under the turn and. They said the Andretti, Mario Andretti driving school was in progress in the infield. So uh, we uh, talked our way of getting into that and we drove under the tunnel and here we are on pit lane at the uh, Mario Andretti driving school. And this was really cool. Uh, they had about, oh God, I'd say about eight or 10 cars there. And you pay whatever hundreds of dollars and they put you through a couple hour class and those aren't people in the stands they just paint the seats differently and uh, I would pan the camera around and just to show you how huge this place is if you took New Hampshire Speedway and multiplied it by like five or six you would have this place I guess this is Bruton Smith's home base and it, it's just magnificent. Uh, the corners are so banked, it's almost like uh, Daytona. You're almost looking straight up at the corner. Uh, but the straightaway here is pretty flat. And they have like four cars side by side lined up. And uh, the guys would pay their money. I think there are a couple of ladies there too. And put you through a little class and then they'll put you out in the car and they put a chip in there so that you can only hit a certain RPM and then the car, the ignition breaks down and you could hear that going on. But there's the uh, guys, a lot of old timers like me. They give you a racing suit and a helmet and they're all standing in line in the pits there waiting, at, waiting their turn to jump in the car. There's one of them. <laughs> Probably a lot of them got those as uh, birthday presents or something from their family to fulfill their racing wish. They also had one of the instructors would be in a car. It was a number 16 car, you'll probably see it. The ride-along car, so for $99, you get to ride in the passenger seat which they had set up along with one of the instructors and he was really booking uh, he wasn't one of the guys that were putting around they weren't really putting around they were going pretty good but not anything like racing speed and i didn't see anybody crash so that was good news there is the huge grandstands and they, 
they have, in turn one, you might have caught a glimpse of it, they have condominiums that they sold, and people actually live there and get a nice view of the track, and I guess a free ticket to the race. Just look out their window. It was pretty neat to, to get there just as they were doing the driving school. Just to show you, I mean, look at, I mean, you might watch this on TV and you see the place might be half empty or so, or, but where it holds 200,000 people, if it's half empty, that's still 100,000 people there, and that's pretty much what New Hampshire Speedway holds. So they're, they're doing pretty good. And Charlotte is just NASCAR country. I mean, you just realize how big this sport is when you go down here. So I went up on, t on the roof of one of the buildings back there, get a better view. And I just wanted to show you how big this place was, panning it with the, with the camera. There's your condos behind that little tower. And then just more grandstands. I believe that's a big video TV. There's the back stretch. We hopped up on another little level here. There's a car coming around the back stretch. Now he's getting into the uh, banking. And now you start more grandstands, so it almost completely encircled the track. Jeff Gordon car. So that was it for Charlotte Speedway. Uh, really impressive place. It's, can imagine we're going to try to go to the Indianapolis Speedway sometimes and see what that's like. I was there in 1961 when I was a kid, and uh, I guess it's a lot different now. But this place was just uh, mind blowing, to say the least. Followed this car around. He's probably going 130. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it. Well, that was quite a visit down there. Uh, our next couple of shows, we're going to show you the NASCAR Hall of Fame that we went to. And uh, we, they allowed us to bring the video camera in, and we taped a couple of shows from in there. It's quite a place. But seeing as how this was a week before Christmas, I wanted to show you uh, a little video I got of one of my favorite Christmas stories called Barrington Bunny. And it's written by Martin Bell, and they did a little video on it. And we're going to show you that now.
Once upon a time, in a large forest, there lived a very furry bunny. He had one lop ear, a tiny black nose, and unusually shiny eyes. His name was Barrington. In a way, winter is fun for bunnies. After all, it gives them an opportunity to hop in the snow and then turn around to see where they have hopped. So, in a way, winter was fun for Barrington. But in another way, winter made Barrington sad. For you see, winter marked the time when all of the animal families got together in their cozy homes to celebrate Christmas. He could hop, and he was very furry. But as far as Barrington knew, he was the only bunny in the forest. Bunnies can hop, and they're very warm, too, because of how furry they are. But he didn't really know whether or not this was true of all bunnies, since he had never met another bunny. When it got too dark to see the tracks he was making, Barrington made up his mind to go home. On his way, however, he passed a large oak tree. High in the branches, there was a great deal of excited chattering going on. Barrington looked up. It was a squirrel family. What a marvelous oh, time there. they seem having to be having. Having a Christmas party? Oh, yes. It's Christmas Eve. Everybody's having a Christmas party. May I come to your party? Are you a squirrel? No. What are you, then? A bunny. A bunny? Yes. Well, how can you come to the party if you're a bunny? Bunnies can't climb trees. That's true, but I can hop, and I'm very furry and warm. We're sorry. We don't know anything about hopping and being furry. But we do know that in order to come to our house, you have to be able to climb trees. Oh, well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And the unfortunate bunny hopped off toward his tiny house. It was beginning to snow when Barrington reached the river. Near the river bank was a wonderfully constructed house of sticks and mud. Inside there was singing. Oh, it's the beavers. Maybe they'll let me come to their party. Hello? Who's out there? Barrington Bunny. Hello, Barrington. May I come to your party? I suppose so. Do you know how to swim? No, but, but I can hop, and I'm very furry and warm. Well, I'm sorry I don't know anything about hopping and being furry, but I do know that in order to come to our house, you have to be able to swim. Well, I, I suppose that's true. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Even being as furry as he was, Barrington was beginning to get cold, and the snow was falling so hard that his tiny bunny eyes could scarcely see what was ahead of him. He was almost home, however, when he heard the excited squeaking of field mice beneath the ground. Oh, it's a party. Hello, field mice. This, this is Barrington Bunny. May I come to your party? But the wind was howling so loudly and Barrington was sobbing so much that no one heard him. Bunnies aren't good to anyone. What good is it to be furry and to be able to hop if you don't have any family on Christmas Eve? Suddenly, Barrington was aware that he was not alone. To his surprise, he saw a great silver wolf. The wolf was large and strong, and his eyes flashed fire. He was the most beautiful animal Barrington had ever seen. Barrington, why are you sitting in the snow? Because it's, it's Christmas Eve, and I don't have a family, and bunnies aren't good to anyone. Bunnies are too good. Bunnies can hop, and they are very warm. Oh, what good is that? It is very good indeed, because it is a gift that bunnies are given, a free gift with no strings attached. And any gift that is given to anyone is given for a reason. Someday you'll see why it is good to hop and be warm and furry. But, but it's Christmas and I'm all alone. I don't have any family at all. Of course you do. All of the animals in the forest are your family. All of the animals in the forest are my family. Oh, it's good to be a bunny. Bunnies can hop. That's a gift. A gift. A free gift. On into the night, Barrington worked. 
First, he found the best stick that he could. That was difficult because of the snow. Then hop, hop, hippity hop, to the beaver's house. He left the stick just outside the door. Then Barrington dug and dug. Soon he had gathered together enough dead leaves and grass to make the squirrel's nest warmer. He laid the grass and leaves just under the large oak tree. It was late when Barrington finally started home, and what made things worse was that he knew a blizzard was beginning. Soon poor Barrington was lost. Oh, it certainly is cold. It's a good thing I'm so furry. But if I don't find my way home pretty soon, even I might freeze. Hello, little mouse. Oh, don't cry. I'll be right there. I'm lost. I'll never find my way home. And I know I'm going to freeze. No, 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 you won't freeze. I'm a bunny, and bunnies are very furry and warm. Now you stay right where you are, and I'll cover you up. Barrington lay on top of the little mouse and hugged him tight. The tiny little fellow felt himself surrounded by warm fur. He cried for a while, but soon, snug and warm, he fell asleep. Barrington had only two thoughts that long, cold night. It's so good to be a bunny. Bunnies are very furry and warm. And then, when he felt the heart of the tiny mouse beneath him beating regularly, he thought, All of the animals in the forest are my family. Next morning, the field mice found their little boy asleep in the snow, warm and snug beneath the furry carcass of a dead bunny. Their relief and excitement was so great that they didn't even think to question where the bunny had come from. And as for the beavers and the squirrels, they still wonder which member of their family left the little gifts for them that Christmas Eve. And no one anywhere in the forest noticed the great silver wolf who came to stand beside that brown, lop-eared carcass. But the wolf did come, and stood there, without moving or saying a word, all Christmas Day, until it was night, and then he disappeared into the forest. Just be five seconds. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. We'll see you next week.